Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J. Kale. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. It's Monday once again, and this is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. For This is uh, episode 55 for July the 20th. And tonight it's just me and Diane. Constance is uh, having some problems with uh, air conditioning, and it has been extremely hot here in Oklahoma this week. So uh, poor Constance, she's uh, suffering uh, in the heat. So it's just me and Diane. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to the podcast. It's going to be a short one, and uh, actually, for our listeners, they might be a little visually impaired, but I will be posting. We're going to talk about uh, LinkedIn, and I'm going to review my own uh, LinkedIn page, which I access LinkedIn uh, via the um, uh, computer because I have such a lousy phone. So a lot of what I'll be talking about will apply to the LinkedIn website uh, as viewed on the computer. But uh, LinkedIn is very, very important for artists. And it's a good way of reaching artists, uh, other working artists, the art community, and art collectors, and curators, and galleries. And one of our recommended videos was uh, the uh, five tips for accessing LinkedIn, which was from Sergio Gomez, and he brought up some very good points. I've Im- implemented some of those points. You will find them at find the link page at um, www.talkartpodcast.com. That's dot talkartpodcast.com. Every week I post that up when they, when I publish the Artist Friends Podcast episode, and uh, you can follow along. Diane, I'm going to set the share up, and let's get started here. First of all, Diane, are you on LinkedIn? Yes, I am, although I'm not as active as you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you go, go to the uh, – First LinkedIn page, at least via the via the computer desktop desktop computer or, or laptop, and it brings up what's called your feed. One of the things that you want to do when you first get on LinkedIn is to set your profile up. And I'm going to click on. I'll be uh, putting screenshots of of these uh, what I'm talking about on the video version that's on the YouTube. For our YouTube subscribers, now the page comes up, and do you, you know, it gives you an opportunity to add, you know, add a uh, uh, 
who you are, name, you know, an image and photograph of yourself. Sergio recommends to take a good professional photo. I have my icon up there. I think that's good enough. You know, my black hat silhouette <laughs> icon. A brief uh, on your dashboard of how many people has, has recently viewed your profile and how many post views and how many search appearances. And then what I like is that as uh, Sergio also talks about is with LinkedIn, your regular posting is very much like Facebook. Your regular daily postings, they operate kind of like a waterfall effect. They scroll by. So people who follow you, who uh, connect with you, may see it and may not see it. However, LinkedIn gives you an opportunity to, to do what is called write an article, when, which is really unique like a, like a blog posting. When you present, when you uh, post the article, it stays on your profile page. That's a way of capturing uh, somebody's attention, especially if you have a uh, major announcement, a new exhibit coming up or whatever. That's a way to keep it in front of uh, your potential viewers all the time. LinkedIn calls it activity. Yeah, and it's on your on your profile, they call it activity. I haven't used that feature. That's something newer. Um, so I didn't know where you even did that. When I when I go back to the home page, I'll, I'll, when I'm on the feed page, I'll show you where that's at. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to like post your resume and your skills and you know and whatnot and your accomplishments. You know, so that's pretty much your. Uh, it's what it's a place for you to sh to uh, toot your horn on the uh, on the profile page. Now let's go back to the home page. I'm going to show you where uh, or your home feed. You see up here, this is where. You, Diane, where it says uh, start a post, this is where you would, po you would post a image or whatever, okay, whatever you want to say, which will operate like the waterfall effect, like the way Facebook does, it'll scroll by. Right there is when you say write an article. If you click on that write an article, that will go to the activity section of your profile, and it will stay there. And when you click on write an article, it brings up, yeah, okay. And it's just like a almost like a newspaper article, you know, you have a headline, you have to write a, you know, write write a title, you can you can put images or videos in there, and then after you do that, then it has a regular text editor so you can bold and you can put uh uh hyperlinks to uh, other pages and things like that in it. So it's it's really really useful. It's um, like a built-in um, blog you know, blogging uh, asset. Now, the biggest thing with uh, LinkedIn, just like, you know, it's a social media site, is, is getting followers. Now, on LinkedIn, they call them connections. I'm going to click on, on uh, they call it, your connections are in your, what they refer to as a network. So if I click on up the top here, it says my network. And over to the left-hand side, it's called man, and then manage my network section. These are how many, like I have, I'm already have a, you know, 1,512, uh, what they refer to as, as connections. That's individual people or companies. These are, yes, these are individuals. Uh, these are artists and, uh, collectors and galleries and, uh, whatnot. Also, whenever under the, my network, you usually, your LinkedIn will send you an email advising that you have a, uh, new connection or somebody that wants to connect with you. And it's also any new ones that will pop up. You have the option of ignoring or accepting. And I'm going to click on accept because this guy was a new one I had today. See that number went up. <laughs> now, the beautiful thing about this is when, when you uh, accept a connection request, they, LinkedIn then shows you other ones that are part of his network or her network, whichever, who you might want to uh, put a connection request. So like this individual had, had some assistant director of the Eden Fine Art Gallery. I'm going to click on connect, which, may, which will send a request to them to connect. And you can just kind of scroll down. And if you click, this is how you build your, your uh, network up. 
by uh, connecting. And of course, there's just a whole bunch of them. <laughs> then it drops down to people you may know with similar roles and gives you more. You know, uh, I have a lot of artists. I have a lot of artists in my section. So what I've been trying to do is uh, weed it out to where it's only galleries and curators. I'm don't, I don't turn down any connection requests, but I'm not actively going and uh, requesting connecting to artists right now because I have too many. That's the other thing. Once what I discovered, Diana, if you remember when I really got hot on LinkedIn well, back in the, this last August, I think I had to ignore it. I had a LinkedIn account for years, and I had pretty much ignored it until uh, I think I, I think we saw a, uh, uh, a Stephen Bauman video where he talked about LinkedIn as a way of uh, reaching out to the uh, art community and uh, collectors and uh, uh, gallery owners and curators. So I got hot. At that time, I only had like 260-some connections. So since that time, I'm up to 1,503. What I noticed was once I reached 1,000, I started getting connection requests almost every day. And I do. Every day or every other day, I'll get one or two connection requests. Some of them are artists. Some of them are galleries. Some are creators. And then there's, there's different businesses that uh, request. Every request that I receive, I never turn down. I go ahead and I accept them. But, I, but now I'm at a point where I only actively go after galleries. How do you find galleries? How do you find art collectors and curators? You look at some of your pre previous people that you've connected to, and you just go through their list of their connections, and then you send requests. Now, just because you send a request, it works just like Facebook. It works just like Twitter and all the others. People don't have to accept if they don't want to. But what I've discovered that most people, if they see that you are a, that you have a connection with somebody who is on their feed, who they've connected with, more than likely they're going to connect with you. It's just like a psychological thing. The beautiful thing about face or uh, LinkedIn, it's very business oriented. Uh, there's also very little, very few in my feed. I have very, very few political posts, and in this, which is surprises me. But uh, since politics is everywhere, everybody's got an opinion. They, you know, they're expressing on both sides of the arguments. With uh, LinkedIn, it's very business oriented. So it's an, it gives me it's a platform for me to uh, display my artwork and uh, to uh, potential collectors and uh, and gallery uh, owners and of course share with other artists because other artists artists buy other artists works too you know they're all all uh, potential collectors the thing about it is it's more of a like a network gathering service it's a way of i've i've received i've had um uh more uh What's the word I want to use? Influence or uh, participation, like in invitations for gallery exhibitions, and they've all come through LinkedIn. You know, so uh, I received this last year probably five or six invitations from galleries over over in Europe. And how I discovered that one gallery that I participate in on a regular the Art Box folks was through LinkedIn, and it works out because it's digital. The other guys are more traditional, and they want you to, to uh, send your artwork over there, which, unfortunately, I don't have the funds right now to do that because uh, packaging your artwork and sending it, sending it around the world, it's pretty expensive. And I'm not at that stage. I've just, I'm just not making that much money to, to allow me uh, to do that now. So I've had to decline those invitations. But if you are an artist who are able and capable of doing that, this is a way to get the word out there. This is a way to reach those uh, those galleries and those curators and those exhibitions. Diane, have how much have you been uh, utilizing LinkedIn? I've done a little bit, but I haven't really um, done as much as you have. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to add a thought in my head on the story, um, but I was I was just thinking about how um, difficult it is to find a lot of these people in a normal setting like you don't it's not something you can look up like 
you know, you, you can't find like who's the head of the department of the, you know, of some, something specific at a museum or at a gallery. That's not necessarily something you can find easily on any other platform. So it's given you an opportunity to kind of open some doors that you might not normally be able to open. Absolutely. But you can also, you can direct message all, all of your connections. You can direct message them. And, uh, you know, if you're so bold as you really want, you find a gallery that uh, pretty much uh, they hold exhibitions of artwork that's, that's similar to yours, you really want to get in there. Hey, you can mess, you know, you can direct message them. And what is interesting is, is um, now these past few months with the COVID-19 crisis and everybody is locked down, it's LinkedIn has really become important. It has really provided an additional alternative i've spoken to different artists and they've you know via messaging and and they pretty much ignored you know they they were more traditional they uh went to their local gallery and and used a more traditional route and they have really kind of ignored the internet version you know the internet process and of course you know they're asking they've been asking me well how do you do this and how you do that so it's really become relevant. It's really, really, and people do buy art through the internet. It's a proven fact. It's a, a billion dollar business. I'm really curious at the end of the year, they'll be uh, publishing uh, some of the uh, uh, sales figures from different organizations of the art sales. And it's, it's exploding. It is r really exploding uh, this year. So why not use it? Why not? You know, and it's the same thing as uh, Diane, when we took the you know, Paul Klein course, and he said, you got to build relationships. That's what you do with LinkedIn. You just don't go and send them a message. Hey, I'm an artist, and here's my artwork. Will you buy my artwork? No. <laughs> if you're in person, it wouldn't work. Well, just because you're on the Internet, it doesn't work either. You have to build that relationship. And how you build a relationship is through your postings of your images and, and also what is nice. Let's go back to the, uh, to the feed page here. In your feed, the people that are your connections, they also, just like on, on Facebook, they post their work. And you have a, you have a, a opportunity to share it, to comment on it, and to click on a like. You know, you like it or love it or, you know, whatever. And uh, that's how you build your relationships. You know, you, uh, you, you look at these posts, you know, and... and, and uh, yeah, like I just on this. Uh, the whole aspect has changed quite a bit since, um, since well, I've been on it for a while, but um, they've added all these different features now that they didn't used to have. It's like Gary Vaynerchuk in one of his little speeches, he says, in 2020, LinkedIn is like Facebook was in 2013 or whatever, whenever Facebook first started. LinkedIn is the early Facebook version. The current version of LinkedIn is like early Facebook. It hasn't gotten cluttered with, you know, a bunch of the negativity that Facebook currently has now. And it is, it's more, uh, it's a gentler, it's a gentler kind of version of Facebook. <laughs> I guess that's a way of saying it. Yeah. And like I said, this feed, your feed is depending on what, when you uh, log on to it. There's our artist friend, uh, Kushlani. Yeah. She's completely left Facebook, and she's only on uh, on LinkedIn. And I see her posts all the time, you know. Uh, and yeah, there's there's business posts for businesses, and adver and there's also an advertising program, a paid advertising program. They're pretty hefty, though. You know, I haven't participated in any of their paid advertising yet because it's it's out of my uh, budget. <laughs> it's, it has a very wide reach. And of all the social media, added that, the hashtags too. They didn't have used to have those either. Yeah, I know. Now you can add. Yeah, you add hash hashtags, and it's uh, and another thing. Uh, LinkedIn has groups, just like uh, on uh, on on Facebook, and these these groups, unlike Facebook, when you can you just pop in a search and like. I found Art Collectors, Art Collectors Network, Contemporary Art Network. When you request to join one of the groups, 
it doesn't happen right away. I don't know if the moderators have to take time to, to look at your artwork or whatever, but I remember when I put a request in, I kept checking it every day. It took almost one of them, almost a month, and the, the others one at least a week or two weeks before they, ex, they uh, accept you into the group. Then you can post into the, into the group. And at the top here, it shows your know, recent, so you can see what recent uh, postings have been in there. I am not as good posting into the groups as I should be. I'm in several groups, and I just I don't utilize it. That's I gotta slap my hand. <laughs> I've just been posting to my you know to my regular feed. Of course, I post my internet radio uh, station links for the podcast for every podcast that we publish. I post it on here, including the artist artist friends podcast. It gets posted. The numbers, the stats page. To get a more detailed stats, they want you to, to subscribe to the premium service, which is a hefty price. So the stats aren't – I don't usually pay that much attention to the stats because they're not that good on uh, on LinkedIn on the free the free option. You know, they don't give you as, as detailed as what you would get with, a, uh, with the premium. But, hey, it's still available to a way of uh, – of, uh, getting your artwork out there to the world and getting them in front of collectors and uh, galleries and curators and in front of the people that might be interested in, you know, in buying your art. All right. That's about enough of the LinkedIn. Like I said, for the um, YouTube version of our podcast, I'll be, I'll post some screenshots of some of the stuff I was talking about. So you guys can uh, see uh, for your audio folks, you just kind of have to uh, use your imagination. And another one of our recommended videos, and maybe Diane and I, we can uh, talk about it, is um, Stefan Bauman's about uh, being an artist, and he calls it some sound foundations. Did you get a chance to listen to some of that, uh, Diane? <laughs> listen to it, sorry. I don't, um, I didn't, yeah, it didn't sink in. <laughs> I'll have to go back and listen to it again. Well, it was kind of like a, a, uh, a, a generic talk. I mean, he started off like I think with some uh, specific uh, topics, and then he just kind of, uh, you know, he. Of course, it was a video that he recorded a year ago uh, in front of his workshop, you know, students. And somebody asked him a question, so he started asking questions. And the first few minutes of it, he talks about varnishing. You know, varnishing work. <laughs> asked about varnishing. And what was interesting was. I believe the same thing, uh, you know, that when you do uh, oil paintings, you should wait six months to a year before you varnish, you know, your oil painting. And he actually contradicts that, which I thought was interesting because somebody asked him, and he said, well, who told you that? And they, she, they, you could hear her, his student, you know, say, well, you know, previous art teacher. Well, who told him that? And these people are starting to laugh. He said, well, he said, if you get down to it, you read the can, it says on the can, six months. But what that is based on, what folks understand, that's based on how thick your paint is. If you don't paint with a thick and pasto oil painting, as soon as your painting is touched to dry, you can varnish. It doesn't make any, any difference. But if you have a thick, you know, a thick and pasto, you know, a lot of thick paint, then yes, you should wait for a while for the paint to to uh, thoroughly curate and dry before you varnish. And I love his expressive expressiveness, you know, waving his hands. Plus, you don't want to don't squirt a little bit varnish. Cover that cover that painting over and over. He says, when I because I usually I have large paintings, so I varnish. You know, I go through a half a can, but uh, I said. Don't be afraid. Paint, you know, varnish and get it to a nice gloss. He said, if you go into the museum and you see a lot of the old masters paintings, look how shiny they are and everything. He said, maybe some people don't like that sh the shininess, but the majority he said that that adds some class to your art and uh, ups your art into the uh, fine art category. That's what I enjoyed about that conversation. <laughs> so I, I, on my paintings, I don't. Um... I, I do varnish them almost immediately, but I use a retouch varnish on them. And then I'll varnish them with a more permanent varnish later on. So I guess 
Okay. I don't know. There's, there's, I mean, he's paint. He said he paints very thinly, so I guess he doesn't have an issue with any, you know, cracking or anything from the varnish. But it can happen. Yeah. So far, all my oil oil paintings I've done since I've started oil painting, I'm up to I think I've done about six now, six or seven. I haven't varnished any of them. They're, one of them is really kind of thick, but most of them are, are rather thin. But I'm going I'm I'm going to wait. You know, maybe next month I might varnish varnish them. It all probably also depends on what medium you're using and how, you know, like that one you said had to use some, so much oil in it. It took a long time for to dry. And so that one you'd probably want to wait for a while until it was really dry. But um, painting, That was that first one that I did that, that you know, I got so excited. Yeah, the paint was thick, and you're right. It took three weeks for that thing to get dry to the touch. <laughs> well, different mediums, though, you know, depending on what you're using in your medium, um, yeah, they do take different times, amounts of time to dry. So that, that plays into it too. So. Yep, exactly. Okay. Well, let's wrap this episode up. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit shorter episode and you have been listening to Clyde J. Kale and Diane Hunt. This was the artist friends podcast episode 55 for July the 20th. We miss Constance. Constance, we miss you if you listen to this next week. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be back next week. Get your air conditioning problem. Yeah, maybe next week it'll cool down a little bit here in uh, Oklahoma. It's been so terribly hot, really, really hot and, and sweltering. Bye-bye, Diane. Good night, Clyde. Good night, everyone. Bye, folks, and thank you for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.